Where did you last see Lieutenant Graham, Pope? It was somewhere around here, Major Branson. I weren't really watching it too close on account of frogs all around us, cutting and stabbing. But that's when I got this. Uh, uh, when I woke up, it was dark. The rest of the patrol were dead. Lieutenant Graham was missing. And I came looking for you, sir. Graham. The book is using him as bait. No, no. I'll go. No, 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 no. I'll go shop. Too late, I'm afraid, Sharp. You did your best, sir. You did more than your best. What's the matter? Time to get up. Don't you hear your bugle? So you can't hear it. <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> Bagpipes could be worse. I hate the bugle because I hate the army. Because I hate the war. We all hate the war. No, you don't. You love it. I'm a soldier. What will you do when you go home, Richard? You'll still be a soldier. But there won't be a war. And if there's no war, then you won't be happy. What will you do all day? Well, we'll do what every other officer does. What every other husband does. 
Whatever that is. I'll tell you what they do, Richard. They ride, they hunt, they gamble, they play cards, they look after their gardens, their dogs, their libraries. They wine and dine and make polite conversation. They cut a figure in society. Is that why you married me, Jane? Cut a figure in society? I thought you loved me for what I am. You know I love you. And you know I love you for yourself. I just picture you in my mind's eye back home and I wonder how you'll fit in. Would you be happy making polite conversation about art and literature? You mean, will I be able? So, what does this fellow Wordsworth do when he's home? What do you think he does? Um, paints. Oh, you bloody fool, Sharp. Should have known him as a philosopher. Richard, I'm a stupid, silly snob. Can you forgive me? Can I forgive you over there? Major Sharp? Major Sharp? Your duty, Richard. I'm going to bathe. What is it, Alice? Beg your pardon, Major Sharp, but you're to report to General Wellington's tent at nine o'clock. Pat! What are you doing? Just to carry out order, sir. Nosey told us to fraternise with the local population. Well, in future, when you fraternise with the local women, make sure they're women over 40. I'll think of that, sir. Harris. Sir. Have you heard of somebody Wordsworth? Oh, yes, sir. William Wordsworth. He's a poet. He's not a philosopher? No, sir. Is that all, sir? Morning, Ramona. Thanks for these. Something the matter? Something to do with Patrick? I can't tell you? Yeah, of course you can. Things are not good in bed between Patrick and me. Well, you know, I... Uh, all of his ups and downs. Not me, no ups, no downs. Steady on. <laughs> Look, Patrick Harper, my husband, making a fool of himself over a gypsy girl. You know what I like to do to her? Calvé, je suis colonel Cresson. J'ai des ordres de l'empereur. J'ai des champignons. Je lui apprends à connaître ceux qui sont venimeux. Mes ordres sont très clairs. Mais je vois, l'empereur veut que vous capturez le Major General Ross, le chef des services secrets de Wellington. Comment allez-vous faire J'ai une idée. Bravo. 
Gaston! Gaston! Vous apprenez vite. Peut-être bien que vous allez pouvoir nous le prendre, ce Major General Ross. Avec votre aide, Général Calvet. Je sais. L'empereur me demande de vous donner toute assistance. Ross est un vieux renard. Il faut un appât de taille pour le faire sortir de son trou. Je l'ai trouvé. Mais naturellement, tout dépend de vous, mon général. I dare say I shall see you at supper some night, Mr. Shillington. I do hope so, my dear lord. I do hope so. Ah, there you are, Sharp. I want you to meet Mr. Clarence Shillington of the London Gazette. This is Major Sharp, uh, one of our most, uh, well, uh, one of our officers. Delighted to make your acquaintance, Major Sharp. Have you done anything heroic? I'm afraid not, Mr. Shillington. My lord. Sharp. Shame on you, Ross. You should have had him stopped at the port. <laughs> Poor fellow just wants to give you a puff for the public back home, my lord. Puff? Rubbish. Have a look at that, Sharp. It's from Colonel Brand, Sharp. You know Colonel Brand, don't you? Yes, sir. I was with him in the ambush that won him his promotion, sir. Well, that ambush created quite a stir in London, as did your report. Prince Regent himself got to hear of it, and Brand did rather well from it. He raised a special reconnaissance troop. Brand's boys, they call themselves. They spend their time far behind the French lines, stirring up trouble, making mischief. That's no matter to me. This is what matters to me. This report, if it's true, could help us change the course of the war. Yes, sir. Brand believes he's located General Calvet's main powder magazine. It's in the Rocher cave system, 30 miles behind the French lines. What do you say to that, Sharp? I spoil it up, sir. How would you rate Brand as a field officer? One of the best I've ever seen, sir. Then you won't complain if he commands this mission. Of course not, sir. You think you and Bran can blow the French powder magazine, do you? Yes, sir. You're a damn fool, Sharp. Thank you, sir. Only one man in the British Army can blow the rocker powder magazine, and that is Major S. Pycroft. And Pycroft won't blow it for us. Why not, sir? Presumably he's still a serving officer. He's a serving officer with half his face missing and his left hand as well. What happened to him? Pycroft and another officer were working on a bomb. The other officer made a mistake on the fuse. Pycroft spends his time in the desert as an exploring officer. Who was the other officer, sir? I was. I want you and Ross to set out at dawn tomorrow and fetch Major Pycroft back to camp. Dismissed. Sir. Oh, and Sharp, I'd be obliged if you'd show that fellow Shellington round the camp. I can't spare another officer. Yes, sir. Oh, and Sharp. You better brace yourself. He's a poet. Poet, sir? My wife will be delighted. Really? Personally, I'd rather call for the surgeon and have him cut off my goddamn foot with a saw. Dismissed. Sir. We're wasting our time, sir. Pycroft won't touch explosives. Then you'll have to make him, Ross. Why me, sir? Because you know how to hurt him. You and Pycroft were close, eh, Ross? We were good friends, sir. Just like you and me, Ross, eh? Find him. Well... Colonel Brandt, so far so good. Now you must convince Wellington to send Ross with you on the mission. Bloody gypsies. They'll have seen us. Merde! Papa! Papa! 
I have to persuade Pycroft to use explosives again, which he's sworn not to do. On top of that, he's going to be at the beck and call of your hero, that bugger Brand. Brand's a brave man, sir. I've seen him in action. Yes, well, he's been out there by himself for a good few years. Every time he comes back to the camp, he's a hero. He's gone to his head, Sharp. He's law unto himself. From what I hear, sometimes he is outside the law. Maybe he uses rough methods, but he gets results. So do you? Well, maybe I do, Sharp. But I don't take pleasure in it. You'll have to wait this time, Ross. Come on, Pycroft, you're buzzard. You and Pycroft were good friends, weren't you? Just like you and me, Sean. Yes, sir. Though I walk through the shadow of the Valley of Death, I shall fear no evil. Receive, O Lord, the souls of these poor unknown gypsies. 
and send down thy vengeance upon their murderers. In the nombre del Padre, y del Hijo, y del Espíritu Santo. Amen. for this poor girl. There he is, sir. Ah, that's him, all right. <laughs> well, I'll be damned. Septimus has got a girl with him. Septimus? Silly, ain't it? Good God, he'll never make it. Down one of them, sir. What about the other four? Septimus will think of something. Good to see you, Septimus. Wish I could say the same. Major Sharp. Thank you, Sharp. Good shot. Sir. You're probably wondering why I called you in from the hills, Pycroft. No, I'm not wondering. You want me to blow something up? The answer is no. I don't use explosives anymore. Could have fooled me back there, sir. Those explosives are for my personal use. Who's the girl? She's a gypsy. Her parents were murdered. She's too frightened to tell me what happened. Oh, you've got gypsies back at the camp. She can stay with them tonight. Gypsies look after their own. So they do, Hector. We could all profit from that example. Especially when cutting fuses. After you, Hector. Thursday. Take me home. Who is that? Well, that's Pycroft. He's Gypsy Girl. Why is he wearing that awful hood? 
Maybe because he's twice her age. I think I should get one of them. Welcome to Wellington's camp, Colonel Brand. Sharp, isn't it? I mean, Major Sharp, I beg your pardon. You've risen in the ranks. So have you, sir. Congratulations, Major. Thank you, sir. And who is this good-looking woman? I introduce my wife. This is Jane Sharp, sir. I'm pleased to meet you, ma'am. May I say you are as beautiful as your husband is brave? Bravery is a subject on which I hear you speak with some authority, Colonel Brand. Well, my fame follows me like a bucket tied to a dog's tail, my lady. Makes a great deal of noise, but is damned inconvenient. Oh, I bon mot. I must make a note of that. This is Mr. Clarence Shellington, sir, who works for the London Gazette. He wants to write about you, sir. Your servant, Shellington. May I make an appointment to speak to you on behalf of my readers, sir? Why not do it over dinner? May I invite you two gentlemen to dine tonight? What do you say, Colonel Brand? I accept, madam. But I warn you, I'm a simple soldier. No fancy dishes. All I require is a good claret. <laughs> and you, Mr. Shellington? Bread and water and your company, madam, would suffice. By the way, Sharp, where can my men find water well away from camp? You're not company in the main line, sir. No, my men keep themselves to themselves. It's a matter of morale. Well, you'll find fresh water and good shelter behind those trees, sir. Good. Thank you. Damn it, Jane, they're dining with us tonight. Who's going to organise the cooking? We're going to have to find somebody who knows all about bloody frog dishes. Which fork was which knife? Of course we shall. What's going on? If I find any of you near this gypsy girl again, I'll confine you to camp for a year. Now clear it off! A lot to you. Harris! As you were, Harris. Now, I'm having some guests for dinner tonight. How would you like to be chef? Eh? Serve at table, talk frog, a little la da not very much, sir. But if you give me Conchita's apple... That's how it started in the Garden of Eden, Harris. Buenos dias, senorita. Senora, not senorita. And I have a child. But it's not mine. Ramona! See you again, Senorita. So who's that ugly buzzard? How should I know? Never saw him before. You never saw him before? Well, by God, you've been doing some winking and twinkling for a married woman. Married woman, me. <laughs> no, for two months, I have no ups, no downs. We are here. Sixty miles north, this river marks the boundaries of our forces. Thirty miles north of the river is the Rocha Fort and Powder Magazine, housing General Calvert's supplies. Fifty miles to the east is General Calvert's main camp. Now our task is simple, to move north, capture the fort, blow the powder magazine, and make it back to camp before Calvert's men can intercept us over the mountains. Congratulations, Brand. It's ambitious and it's rather impressive. There is one thing, sir. It seems a pity to blow the fort without making a full inventory. You mean for intelligence purposes? Perhaps I didn't make myself clear. General Calvé is rumoured to have gathered his stores as well as his ammunition at the fort. 
An inventory would give us an accurate picture of Napoleon's intentions in the whole area. Perhaps I should go on the mission, sir. Sniff round the fort, make a full survey of the stores, put it all together, would give us a glimpse into Calvé's mind. I would be risking my head of intelligence on nothing more than a rumour that the Rocha fort is the centre of General Calvé's storage system. Yes, sir, I think it might well be a risk worth taking, eh, Brand? I can assure you, my lord, my information is never wrong. Very well. Colonel Brand and his men will set out at dawn the day after tomorrow. They will scout one day ahead of the main body of infantry to be commanded by Major Sharp. Sharp will also be responsible for the security of a small party of sappers and engineers to be commanded by Major Pycroft. Will that be all, sir? I've had a long journey and should like to make myself presentable enough to dine with Major Sharp and his wife tonight. I'm obliged to you for the information, Brand. Dismissed. Colonel Brand seems to think very highly of you, Sharp. Seems so, sir. Well, don't let it go to your head. One minute you're showing poets round the camp, the next you're throwing dinner parties for distinguished senior officers. You're cutting quite a figure in society, Sharp. Thank you, sir. Major Pycroft to see you, sir. I respectfully request not to be assigned to this mission as explosives, officer, sir. Request denied, Major Pycroft. A man under duress may not do his best work, sir. Let me make something clear to you, Pycroft. You have two choices. Either you blow up the Rocker powder magazine, or I'll return you to the regular army list and find an excuse to send you back to London. See how you like it walking around in your leather hood with children pointing at you in the street. <clears throat> Well? I'll blow the magazine, sir. Dismissed. Sir. What do you think, Ross? Colonel Brand has offered us an interesting opportunity. Can we exploit it? Too early to say. I'll only find out by going on the mission. By then it may be too late, Ross. Too late for you. <laughs> That's what you pay me for, sir. May I compliment you on an excellent meal, my lady. Tasted all the sweeter since we've spent the last six weeks foraging for food behind enemy lines. How wonderful to live like a gypsy. And what a good idea for a portrait. Would you sit for me, dear lady? Some rings, a scarf. Oh, please say you will. The Romanies are so romantic. I'm sorry to hear you say that, Shellington. I myself hold no regard for the culture of the gypsy race. Nor I. I merely meant that they were a good source of poetic inspiration. I shall be glad to get myself up if you wish to paint my portrait. I'm sure Mr. Shellington's admiration of the Romany race is purely artistic. Absolutely. Absolutely, my dear lady, how aptly put. Surely you don't see gypsies as a suitable subject for poetry, Shellington. The sublime is my only subject, Colonel Brand. I'm glad to hear it. Soldiers should confine themselves to shooting. Poets should confine themselves to the sublime. Pray, what do you think is the proper subject for painters? I think painters should confine themselves to nature. Sunsets and such like. You are a student of nature, sir? Absolutely. Do you know why? Because I am a soldier. What's the first thing you notice about nature, Shillington? You notice that the strong animals survive and the weak fall away. That's how the world is. The strong survive and the weak die. That's how it should be. That way you breed a strong race. Survival of the strongest is the principle upon which I conduct my troop. I work my men hard. Those that can keep up, I promote. Those that can't, I have no use for. What about the wounded, sir? Wounded? In battle, sir, some men are killed, some survive, and some men are wounded. The wounded are always the greatest burden. What do you do about them? We leave them sharp. This is war. War is no place for the weak. 
It's a big change. Change? What do you mean? When I first met you, sir, you tried to rescue a wounded man under fire. Well, let's just say I felt lucky that day. Out late, my little lady. I'm not your little lady. No, that's right, you're Sergeant Harper's little lady, but he don't treat you right, do he? You would understand better what happened if you were married, Sergeant Pope. Well, married? Me? Oh, no. I like to stay free as a bird. <laughs> what kind of bird? A cuckoo. Oh. I like to lay my eggs in a nest and then it moves on. Oh. I'd love to lay an egg in your nest. Oh. <laughs> I'm not a ho. I'm the wife of Patrick Hart. I'm sorry you can't stay longer, sir. But it won't keep you from your bed. Bed? I'm not for bed. I shall go back now and turn out the guard. I turn them out three times a night. Do it myself. Keeps them on their toes. Well, good night, sir. Good night, Charles. Good night, my lady. Till tomorrow, Shellington. As Shakespeare says in Hamlet, good night, dear prince. Your carriage awaits, Mr. Shellington. It was so pleasant to have you here tonight, Mr. Shellington. To hear polite conversation, talk of poetry. I hope we will see you again. I shall see you all night in my dreams, dear lady. Wasn't it a wonderful evening? May I be excused as soon as I put everything to rights, sir? What's your rush, Alice? I have an appointment with a young lady, sir. Oh, good luck to you, then. Mr. Shellington, sir. Yeah, what about him, Alice? Well, his quotation from Shakespeare was incorrect. The phrase is from Hamlet, but it's not good night, dear prince. It's good night, sweet prince. What's your point, Alice? My point, sir, is that Shellington does not know a lot about literature, but he knows a lot about women. Good night, sweet prince. Conchita. Portuguese use it a lot. Your fellow Harris probably saw them do it when he was in Lisbon. You think Harris could have done this? Sir. 
Well, it seems he was fond of one of the gypsies. He probably tried to make love to her. The others came along and he killed them all. Who reported this murder? I did, sir. So Harris goes to her caravan in the dead of night, chokes her to death, and he calls you in. Makes sense to you, sir? It does seem you may have been a bit hasty, Provost Marshal. Thank you, sir. I will have to arrange a court of inquiry, possibly a court martial. In the meantime, this man will be confined to camp and will be in your care. Good of you to go out and I'll mine now, sir. Forget it. Just as we must hope that Pycroft can forget his poor gypsy girl. What gypsy girl was that, sir? Wasn't Pycroft's gypsy girl murdered last night? <laughs> what makes you think that, sir? I thought she was staying here with the others. No, sir, she was staying with Pycroft last night, sir. Lucky for her. So, Pycroft got himself a gypsy. Who else would have him, eh? I'll be on my way, Sharp. Call on my assistance any time. Thank you, sir. You're in big bloody trouble, Alice. I know, sir. Prima facie doesn't look good, sir. Prima facie? What do you mean, prima facie? Latin, sir. Prima facie, at first sight. Oh, shut up, Paris. What have you got to say for yourself? Nil desperandum, sir. Never say die. Harris, until this matter is resolved, you're my responsibility. Now, while I'm on this mission, you will act as manservant to my wife. You're letting a suspected murderer look after your wife, sir? Harris, I am posting you to my household, as I will post you to a position on a battlefield. Yes, sir. The ring. Here I am, Colonel Brand, as we arranged. Well, this won't do at all. You must don a most heroic uniform and sit on a most heroic horse. The readers of the Gazette pay two pennies for my paper, sir, and they expect to see the sublime. Don't worry, Shellington, I'll give your readers their money's worth. Put it away, Pycroft. Sit down. I want you to put your mind to this, Pycroft. Last night, somebody came into the camp and killed three gypsies, a man and two women, no apparent reason. Zara told me the men that killed their mother and father spoke English. She heard them shouting and she's seen her parents' horses in this camp. They cut a ring from my mother's finger, shaped like a snake. She made a drawing of it for me. When they discover their mistake, they'll come after her. You can't say it's her on this mission with Pycroft. She can stay with Ramona. She'll be safe here. Much obliged, Sharp. Concerned about this mission, sir. Attempting <laughs> to blow up a French powder magazine is reasonable cause for concern, Charles. It's not, I see. Huh? You 
It's the man leading the mission that worries me. You agree to be second in command? You're questioning his lordship's orders? No, sir. Go back and prepare your men, Sharp. Leave the thinking to me. Come on, come on, hurry up. Yes, sir. Troop president is correct, sir. Aye, double up! Don't worry, Harper. Your turn will come. Let's get a moving. Company! Shoulder! Arms! Right! Face! Left! Wheel! Quick! March! J'ai besoin de deux groupes. D'abord un petit groupe de moutons. Des moutons Des hommes qui n'ont pas envie de se battre. Oh alors là, <rire> c'est pas ça qui manque. Deuxièmement, un groupe plus important, des hommes avec du courage, qui aimeraient qu'on leur offre une deuxième chance pour former une garnison. Et tous ces hommes sont des déserteurs. La guerre va mal, mon cher. Comment distinguer entre les moutons et les brebis Les brebis Ah oui, les moutons, les brebis, ouais. Voilà vos moutons. Et voilà vos brebis. Son's got the bait. La France n'a plus besoin de vous, mes enfants. Vous êtes libres. Au revoir. Alors, mes enfants. I'm sorry about keeping you from the rest of the camp, but I have my reasons. No need to apologize, Sharp. I'm used to being on my own. Well, 
You won't be on your own tonight. Thank you, Sharp. Back from memories, eh? Sir? I beg your pardon, sir. It's all right. Just keep an eye on him, eh? Don't know who's about. Don't you worry, sir. Me and this old lass, we'll look after him. It is entitled, Thinking of Tomorrow's Battle. Not ready yet. Shouldn't it be called Thinking of Going Home, Mr. Shillington? The people who buy the Gazette want to read about the spirit of war, Major Sharp, and that is what I'm here to sketch. Spirit of war, eh? Very good. Carry on, Mr. Shillington. Good night, Major Sharp. Good night, sweet prince. Congratulations, girl. You must be able to smell the garlic. Stay back, Mr. Shillington. A few dead frogs down there. It's not a pretty sight. Don't be silly, Mr. Sharp. That's what I came to see. The spirit of war. The sights of war. 
the sounds of war. The sounds of war, Mr. Shillington. You'll hear the sound of war down there, all right. It's a very soft sound. And a very dirty sound. Pockroft! You notice anything? What, Sean? There's no losses on our side. That's a red quarter amongst them. Brown's the only one ahead of us. Must have taken them by surprise. Maybe. Hold your hand there, sir. Have a look at them, Pycroft. What the devil are you looking for, Sharp? The man who ran the furthest. There he is. How do you think this man died? He was slashed to death with a sabre, for God's sake. What are you playing at, Sharp? Take a closer look, sir. Oh, God. Sharp? Ross? What is it, Pycroft? On the right, regulation powder issued to us. On the left, the powder issued to these poor buggers. Just a pinch of powder. The rest was dust, sand, God knows what other rubbish. Whoever armed these poor devils knew they were going to die here. They didn't have a chance. This was slaughter. All right, what's going on? Nobody could have set up a massacre like this without working with the French. Bad powder, no British casualties. Stop. It's all a bloody fraud. It's brand, isn't it? Has to be. And you knew all along. You were bloody Wellington. Yeah, we, we, we had our suspicions. You're Sharp. bloody new. Why don't you tell me? Sharp, we had to be sure. Sure? Look around you. This isn't soldier. He couldn't even do it cleanly. Man's a bloody butcher. A damned impudent man. But you're absolutely right. Call Brand in for questioning. We are going home. Oh, no, we're not, sir. Huh? It's a trap, man. They've baited it with a really big cheese, the Rocker Powder magazine. We are going home. No, we bloody not. We're going to get Brand and we're going to blow up that frog bloody magazine. Pycroft. You get me in there, Sharp. I think it could be arranged. And we're going to use bloody big bait. Oh? What? You. Me? Yes, you. Sir. Oh, he looks bad. I think he could do it seeing the surgeon. Oh, Best brown paper and paraffin also. That'll do it. What are we going to do with him, Sharp? Send him home, sir. Home? He'll need an escort. Send to a Brand's men back with him. They know the terrain. Gives us a perfect excuse for bringing Brand back. What if he doesn't want to go back to Wellington's camp? Oh, he'll want to, sir. Where am I? Once even tried to seduce my wife. What? Oh, I remember. I should see a surgeon. Don't worry, Shellington. We'll soon have you back home. You know our friend here is going to be hanging around your house. 
So will Harry's part. You know what I want, don't you? We need Zara as bait for brand. I'll have to ask her, Sharp. You know what the answer to that will be. She's a Romany. She wants revenge for her parents' death. They want us to go back, sir. Why are they calling you back? I don't know. But it means I get to stay at Sharp's camp tonight. Ross is very important to me. You will remember that I have made you what you are. And I could destroy you. You'll get what you want. But remember, you need me more than I need you. Don't ever threaten me again. Will there be anything else, Mum? No, thank you, Harris. You may go. Thank you, Mum. There is something else, Harris. Yes, Mum? Sit down, Harris. I wanted to talk to you about Major Sharp. You've known him longer than I have. Serving soldiers don't discuss their commanding officers with strangers, Mum. Stranger? Is that what I am, a stranger? His wife? A stranger? I'm sorry. I merely meant that you're not a soldier, Mum. Now, if you'll excuse me. Please, Harris. Talk to me. Tell me what you think of him. Not as a major, but as a man. What makes you love him? Mom. Why would you follow him to the death? Loyalty. We're loyal to him, he's loyal to us. In life and in death. We trust him with our lives, and he trusts us with his life. And with his wife. He trusts you with his wife. La forteresse de Rocha. Je suis sûr qu'ils seront contents de voir leur nouveau logement. En avant Deeply obliged to you, sir. Glad to see the back of him. Think nothing of it. Shouldn't be out here anyway. Matter of fact, I'm glad you called me back. I should have been here to keep an eye on Ross. Yeah. Thinks the French are trying to trap us. <laughs> Mind if I ask you another favour, sir? Not at all. Well, between you and me, sir, the lads are getting very nervous about that powder wagon. So I've told Pycroft to take it up to the woods for the night. Take his gypsy girl with him. I'd be damn grateful if you could put on a special guard for him, sir. I'll take care of it myself. Thank you very much, sir. What's going on here, eh? We feed frogs to the crows. We don't. The soldiers, same as us. Soldiers? You call that bedraggled lot soldiers? That'll do, Pope. Aren't you the fellas they call chosen men? The scourge of the French? 
Sure there isn't some mistake? You seem a bit soft-hearted to be chosen men. Chosen men are men of honor. Men who'll fight any enemy to the death, but still bury them. They have respect. Soldats, vous avez la chance de former la nouvelle garnison de cette forteresse. On vous offre une dernière occasion de faire votre paix avec la France. Vive la France Vive la France Vive la France things pop. I'll tell you melt. I'm gonna take you into the woods laddie. You'll go in a man. How you come out is entirely up to you. Get out! There's about two ounces of explosives here. Not quite enough to kill you, just enough to make a nasty hole. Rather unpleasant with all these rats. Wolves maybe. It's a seven-minute fuse. You'll call for me in about four. I'll return in about six, if you're lucky. told me that if I told nobody would believe me. But please, Major, for the love of God, stop that fuse. He's a French spy. He's a murderer. He made me a murderer. But he'd make me a spy too. He, he's made all of us murderers and spies. Never. Murderers, maybe. Oh, we did well out of brand. Plenty of loot, lots of women, but we're not spies. Pope, maybe. But not me. Not me or the men. Oh, please, Major, I've told you everything I know. You think he's told us everything, Sharp? No. Can't tell us why the frogs put their powder magazine at risk. What are we doing here? Ross. They want Major General Ross. Because he knows Wellington's strategy. The frogs were going to jump on you tomorrow night. No prisoners except Ross. The next morning, me and Bran find you all dead. Take on the garrison at the fort. And report back to Wellington as heroes. Well, I'm convinced, but it won't convince the court-martial. They'll say he said it under duress. Besides, he can always take it all back. Brand has ways of bringing pressure. But please, Major Sharp. Stop the fuse! Stop the fuse! But it took me in. It took us all in. It took you in too, didn't you, Sharp? Eh? Hey? Remember? 
when he rescued Lieutenant Graham. But you thought he was a hero, eh? Well, the French set that up. And then you got him promoted. So I did. I'll have to make up for it now. I don't know why I bother. We'll shoot you anyway. They might not. I'll turn King's evidence. Might get away with a flogging. <laughs> they play fair, you know. I think I can make you a better offer than that. How about you and Harper just go off, eh? So you, Pat? That suits me just fine. There you go. Just watching Pat. He's a crafty little bastard. What shall I do to show how much I love her? How many millions of sighs can suffice? That that wins others' hearts never can move her. Those common methods of love she'll despise. I do beg your pardon, ma'am. Sharp! Let me and my boys go in and finish off the fort. I bet you'd like that. Butchering another pathetic bunch of French deserters. Better for you, surely, Sharp. <laughs> That's not soldiering. Pat. I speak little English. What do you want? The French colonel has left you here to die. He's given you bad powder. The powder is so bad, it cannot carry a bullet strong enough to kill me. I wish you to try. Tirez! Tirez! Soldiering. Column! Forward! March south as quickly as you can. 
If you see a British soldier, surrender. At least you'll be safe. Merci, monsieur. En avant. And if you should meet up with your French colonel again, tell him we are three times their number. D'accord. Feeding false information to the enemy. That's soldiering. Lock him up. Move on, move on. We're prepared to fight alongside you, Sharp. I wouldn't want to be caught dead in the same grave as you. Come on, move your Come on, move on, move on. Come on, keep moving. Come and see this, Sharp. Bycroft. Probably on the other side of this door. I'll have to blow it open. I'll blow it open then. And risk setting off the whole magazine. Well, you're supposed to be the expert, aren't you? Broke, sir! Five to one, lads! What do you say? Five to one against us the first time they come. But after that, the odds turn in our favor. What do you say, lads? What do you say, lads? Yeah! Yeah! Show the colors! Hagman, call Major General Ross for the field court marshal. On the double. Aye, sir. Hector, there's something I've been meaning to tell you. It may have been my fault. I may have cut the fuses too short. Not like you to cut short fuses, Septimus. We're getting married, Zara and I, if we get out of this. You'll have to be my best man, Hector. Can't have a best man who cuts a short fuse, eh? It would be a great honor, Septimus. My dear. Mad sharp. Court martial with the frogs being at the door. That's why I want a court martial, sir. I want Colonel Brand tried as a traitor. And I want him tried for six murders. Captain Craig will act for the defence. If I can think of anything to say. Very well, Sharp. But there'll be a record of this trial. I want everything done by the book. I want witnesses. I want proof. Then let's get started straight away, sir. Very well. You have ten minutes for the prosecution and no more. I call my first witness, sir. Zara the Gypsy Girl. Whoever murdered her mother found it on her finger. Did you ever wear such a ring, Colonel Brand? Of course not, you damn fool. This is a sketch drawn by Mr. Shillington of Colonel Brand on the morning of the 10th of October. It's signed and dated. It shows that Colonel Brand was wearing Zara's mother's ring on that morning. This is a sketch drawn by Mr. Shillington on the following day, by which time Colonel Brand had realised that Zara had probably most likely heard or seen her mother being murdered. As you can see, sir, the ring is now gone. You have anything to say to that, Colonel Brand? I've never seen the ring before in my life. Turn 
out your pockets, Brand. I knew you were too mean to throw it away. That's not proof. Pope must have put it in my pocket. Before we leave these sketches, sir, one more detail. See this braided cord on the riding crop, wrapped around his hands? See the braid? The same X marks that we found on the gypsy girl's necks back at the camp, and that we found on the neck of the deserter yesterday. The same mark. You're excused, my child. That's just the first of the details, sir. I now intend to read a testimony of the late Sergeant Pope. It's quite conclusive, sir. I think you'll agree, having heard it, that we have a prima facie case to convict Colonel Brand and sentence him accordingly. Get on with it, Sharp. Oh, I protest. This isn't a proper court martial. Oh, come on, Brand. We're doing our best. There is a bloody war on. Colonel Brand is no hero. He's a murderer. Traitor and a spy. I don't know his motives, but I can guess. I suspect you'll find he has debts back home. A mortgage, gambling debts, maybe a blackmail he has to pay off. Who knows? Maybe he was just mad for money. Sold his soul for French gold. I demand the death penalty. That concludes the case for the prosecution. Captain Craig, do you have anything to say for the defence? Nothing in his defence. Nothing in mine. Colonel Brand, do you wish to say something? Do you really think anyone in London will stand for this? You know how it'll look. A zealous officer being persecuted by small and petty men. The frog, sir! Front column advancing! <laughs> Mr. Wales, all volunteers! We'll give them three volleys! They fire at will! Then we'll give them the cold steel! <laughs> Take their satchel bombs. Six second fuse.
they'll be back. I'm getting too old for this. Let me see a die hanging. <laughs> too old are you, Hagman? The court martial has reached its verdict. Colonel Brand has been convicted on six counts of murder and has been sentenced to death. The sentence to be carried out in a manner to be determined at a later date. In other words, when we get out of here. If we get out of here. Court martial dismissed. Guilty. Sentence is death. Wellington will have to confirm that sentence, Craig. And they'll never make it back to camp. Well, you've had your fun, Sharp. But it'll be over in the next few minutes when the frogs come over that wall. Then you'll need a friend. I'll be your friend, Sharp, but you're going to have to beg. Because they'll torture you. They'll torture you and they'll torture Ross. You'll be begging me to make them stop. And by God, I'm going to make you beg, Sharp. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that, Harper? Oh, me? No, I saw nothing, sir. Did you see what happened to Colonel Brand? Oh, he's a funny fish, sir. I just saw him jump headlong into the wishing well. <laughs> Why do you think he'd want to do something like that, sir? Thank you, Harper. You shouldn't have done that, Sharp. Yes, I should. Pycroft thinks he's found a way out. A tunnel that leads out onto the hill. Trouble is, we'll need a garrison to provide a rear guard to let the rest of us get away. I think you can find that garrison. How would you like to die like soldiers? Good luck, Craig. Good luck, Sharp. Come on, come on! Come on! Close in ten minutes, Sharp. Five, five hundred and eighty-six, five hundred and eighty-seven, five hundred and eighty-eight. <laughs> <laughs> Five hundred and ninety-eight, five hundred and ninety-nine, home. Six hundred and one, six hundred and two. Time to cut them too long, Septimus. <laughs>
How about a song, Eggman? I'm a Vrumque Cano. Summit. Sing of Arms and the Man. Very impressive, Sharp. It's of a gentleman soldier as a sentry he did stand. Forward, march! He kindly saluted a fair maid by the waving of his hand. So boldly then he kissed her and he passed it as a joke. And he drilled her into his sentry box wrapped up in a soldier's cloak. Les ordres de l'Empereur. Vous avez failli à votre devoir. I dreamed of you last night. When the muse came to me. And I wrote you this poem. I trust you will not be offended. I dreamed of you. How shall I say? Undraped. Oh, Mr. Shellington. I don't know if I dare let you read it. My love in her attire doth show her wit. It doth so well become her. For every season she has dressings fit For winter, spring and summer No beauty she doth miss When all her robes are on But beauty's self she is When all her robes are gone A fine poem First published as a poetical rhapsody in 1602 Originally attributed to Anonymous of all people but personally, I think it was written by Francis Davison. Francis Davison, eh? I'm so sorry. We poets share a common muse. Poetry is like an apple tree. And we poets, like birds of the air, alight and feed on it where we may. Francis Davison, eh? Wrote it on a candle fly, did he? Light to the silly fly, to the dear light I fly, of your disdainful eyes. But in a diverse wise, she with the flame doth play by night alone, and I both night and day. That's me, a silly fly drawn to the candle light. I nearly got my wings burned, didn't I, Harris? I don't think so. He's not that hot. To report, Rifleman Harris. Nothing serious, sir. Small skirmish. He went off with his tail between his legs. Relieved of guard duty, Harris. Turn to your unit. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. My cries, Dan. Well done, Harris.
Is he dead, Patrick? He'll never lay a hand on you again. Ever. Did you think of me? All the time. All the time. When we get back to England, it will be like this. All the time. We we'll have a house with a garden. We we'll have friends to stay. We could read books together. <laughs> Play the piano. One day. Well done, Pycroft. I'm old. No problems with the explosives this time, Ross? No, sir. All scouts will need to know about Colonel Brandt, sir. Tell him he died a hero's death. Let's get on with the war. My lord. Gentlemen. Here's 40 shillings on the draw. For those who volunteer to come, to list and fight the foe today. Over the hills and far away O'er the hills and o'er the main Through Flanders, Portugal and Spain King George commands and we obey Over 